Welcome, friends. We're so glad to have you in our study today. If you are just joining us and you have not continued to been a part of the study before, this is a third lesson studying from the book of Daniel. The other two are available. We'd encourage you to go back and to view those as we have used those by way of introduction. We welcome you because the book of Daniel is a book of great importance. It was that that dealt with a period of time about 70 years. It prophesied, that is, Daniel did, of events to come over the next 800 years. And it was that that affected not only the nations of which Daniel was subject to, but the Jews and what would happen to their nation. And it likewise affected those that will be a part of God's everlasting and eternal kingdom. As we announced last week, we're discussing today Nebuchadnezzar dreams a dream. And as we look at Nebuchadnezzar, we find that Nebuchadnezzar was a man that dreamed a dream. He was one that was disturbed highly by the dream that he dreamed. It was all he could think about. He couldn't sleep. And he wanted to know what the significance of this dream meant. Now, in that era of time, dreams were regarded as some kind of a foretaste and a revelation to something by a higher being. And significance was placed upon dreams. And men that were in ruder positions had around them advisors and magicians to tell them what the significance of the dream was that they dreamed. And so it was that Daniel, or rather that Nebuchadnezzar, could hardly wait until it was that he could call together those that were his magicians, his wise men, and learn from them the thing that he had dreamed. And so he called to Arioch, or to those that were his ones that would call the people together and asked that all the magicians and all of the wise men be gathered together. And they assembled before Nebuchadnezzar. And when they assembled before Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar told them, I have told and I have dreamed a dream. It is something that is on my mind, something that I want an interpretation about. I want you to tell me this dream and tell me what the dream does mean. Well, the magicians were ones that said, Okay, king, tell us what the dream is. We'll tell you what the interpretation of the dream is. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, The thing is gone from me. I don't remember it. And so it was that I want you to tell me what the dream was and what the meaning of the dream was. Now, this was not the answer that these magicians were looking forward to. They were ones that were expected that the king would tell them what the dream and that they could give to him what they considered the interpretation of that dream. They were astonished beyond measure that the king expected them not only to interpret the dream, but to tell them what the dream was. And so they said again, tell us the dream, O king. And the king said, the thing is gone from me. And he said, you're just trying to buy time. And he said, you tell me what the dream is. Tell me what the interpretation is. And when you do that... You will be rewarded with great riches and treasures and honors. But if you don't tell me, then it's going to be that you're going to be put to death. Well, the magician said, O king, this is something that has never been asked of us, nor has any ruler before ever asked his magicians and wise men to tell the dream and then to give the interpretation of it. In essence, this is something you're asking that's impossible. And they went on to say, O king, there isn't a mortal, there isn't a man on earth can do what you're asking. 
the gods that do not reside in physical bodies, they can tell you, but they don't walk on earth. The king was furious. He was very, very angry. And so he said, you are imposters. You are frauds. And he gave the command that they were all to be put to death. Well, this was something that was going to involve not only those that were assembled before the king, but others that were of the same stature and of the same situation. That is, it was going to involve these young men, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel. And as the edict went out, it was not executed immediately. And Arioch, the captain of the king, was a friend of Daniel. And Daniel went to him and asked him, what's the urgency about it? Why is it so necessary that these be things that we should be executed? And Arioch told him what it was. And so, through Arioch, Daniel sought an audience with the king, and he told uh, the king, Give me time, appoint me a time, and I will tell you what the dream means. Now, there is some disagreement between Bible students as to the words of Nebuchadnezzar, that is, that uh, the dream is gone from me. Had he actually forgotten what the dream was? It was just something that was there that was heavy on his heart, and he knew something was there, but he didn't remember the dream. Some think, yes, he actually had forgotten the dream, as he said he did. Others have the idea that he was a suspicious man, and he had reason to be. Any king in authority was always in danger of being assassinated by others that wanted to replace him with a person of their choice. And he was, by necessity, a person that was suspicious. And as he had said to these individuals, if you can tell me what the dream means, you can tell me what the dream is. And he was right about that. But when we look at that, we find that it does pose a problem, a problem for Daniel. Daniel also had gone out on a limb, for Daniel had said... O king, appoint us a time, appoint us a time, and I'll tell you what the dream means and what this means, what the dream is. You know, if there was ever a time to pray, it was right then. Here was a man that had gone down on the limb. He hadn't had revelation from God, but he had some confidence God would bless him, and he was confident that God would give him the necessary knowledge to tell the king what the king desired. And it was a leap of faith, but it was also a time for individuals to pray. The Bible teaches that Jesus taught his disciples thusly uh, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Prayer is something that is a very effective thing. The Bible says the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much in his workings. James talks about the power of prayer when he calls to mind Elijah who prayed that it might not rain, and it didn't rain for three plus years. And if we find that in prayer, that God has said that, Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Ask, and ye shall receive. We find that uh, there are certain conditions in regard to prayer, though. And that is that if a man prays, he must pray in faith. James said, Does any man lack wisdom? And certainly Daniel and his companions lacked wisdom. And uh, we find uh, that uh, James said, well, if he lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all liberally and upright of not. Uh, but, he said, let him ask in faith, uh, nothing doubting. For he that doubteth is like the surge of the sea, driven by the wind and tossed. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord, a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Uh, there is something else that we need to remember 
and that is, is that God said, he that turneth away his ears from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. These are from the book of Proverbs. And thus we find that Daniel and his companions went to God in prayer. How fervent their prayers were, and certainly prayers that were prayers in faith. And God gave them that vision. God gave them that knowledge. What a wonderful thing that God does. For God does answer prayer. And Daniel did something uh, when it was that God gave him the answer to the prayer that he had prayed. Tell us and tell me what the vision is and tell me what the vision means. He thanked God. He was grateful to God. And this is something we ought always to remember, is that when we've prayed to God fervently for something and God answers us and gives it to us, we ought to fall on our knees and thank God that he's heard our prayer and granted us the thing that we wished so fervently from him. Remember, Jesus was a healer of many individuals, and once he met ten men, and they were individuals that were lepers, and they knew that Jesus had the power to cleanse them from their leprosy. And so they implored and begged and asked the master, help us. And he said, what do you want? We're lepers. Cleanse us from our leprosy. And Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. And as they were going, they were cleansed. And one looked and saw he was cleansed. And he turned back and fell on his face and thanked Jesus for the cleansing that Jesus gave him. And Jesus asked this question of uh, this man, who was a Samaritan, incidentally. Uh, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Were the nuns save the stranger to come back and give thanks to God? And so when Daniel and his companions received the note and the revelation, uh, how glad he was. And he went to Ariok, the king's captain, and said, tell the king. We can tell him what the dream means. We can tell him what the king is. And don't kill the magicians. And so Daniel's prayer that was answered by God not only preserved his life, but through Daniel's request for all those that were wise men, their lives were spared as well. So, Daniel was granted his audience with the king. And he went in, and the king asked him, Can you tell me what this dream means? And Daniel said, Yes, I can. But, he said, I want you to know that I cannot do it of myself. And there is not a single person on earth, O Lord, O, o, o king, that can do what you have asked, save there is a God in heaven, and that God in heaven can. He knows secrets, and he's revealed that secret to me. Here, O king, is what you dreamed. He said, O king, you saw an image. It was exceeding great and bright. It had a head of gold. It had breast and arms of silver. It had belly and thighs of brass. It had legs of iron and feet of iron and clay. And you looked at that image. And then you saw a mountain. And without hands, a stone was cut out of that mountain. And it fell on that image. And it crushed that image and broke it to pieces. And then that stone began to grow and grow and grow and became a great mountain that filled all the earth. In our next study from Daniel, we're going to give you the interpretation of that dream, the interpretation that God divinely gave to Daniel to give to Nebuchadnezzar. And you'll be astonished to know that that dream is that that affects you and affects me even this very day. We thank you so much for being with us today. We hope that you will continue as we look at this wonderful book, this prophet of exile. And remember, this coming Friday, we have our journeys through Acts that continue, and we hope you'll look at those and study those. In the meanwhile, we want to wish each of you the blessings of God upon you. May your day be bright, and may it be that you 
Have peace and joy in your life. Thank you for listening.